like a lion. Okay. I would say that one of the most important qualities that you can have and develop in high school is learning to be charming. It's that important. Hey, it's Abby J, your personal life coach. And today I'm teaching you how to be charming at school because I genuinely feel like it's the charming people that are popular. It's the charming people that get asked on dates and it's the charming people that have so much success with people and connections and their teachers. And I want that for you. So today I'm going to break down four tips on how you can be the most charming person at school. When coaching individuals on how to be more charming and how to basically, you know, find more social success at school, one of the very first things that I teach them is to see everything with humor. This is one of those traits of charming people that you can't be charming without this one. You really can't. Like, there's a lot of things that you can do or trade to be charismatic, right? Or like to be popular, you can try this, but to be charming, you gotta see everything with humor. And let me give you a couple examples. How often have we been in a situation where maybe we said something that didn't make sense? Or maybe we like did something kind of embarrassing or we're in with a circle of friends and you know, it's just kind of this like weird, like mood and vibe and stuff. That's when you really have the opportunity to shine as a charming person and see everything with humor and extend that little bit of grace that comes with humor. I talk about that in another video on how to just be charming in general, but when we can treat people with humor and, and not that we're making fun of them, if anything, this is the exact opposite that the only person we're allowed to make fun of is ourself but that we, like when somebody does something so just like, okay, that was weird, you you laugh and you're like, oh my gosh, you are, you're so funny. You always make me laugh, right? All of a sudden you saved that person from being embarrassed, from feeling stupid, from feeling like, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe, like I hope nobody noticed that. To now you turn that into a good thing. You just complimented them on that. Now, we wanna be careful that we don't compliment people for like, bad things or saying something like rude or unkind, but most of us are going about our day and we just do little silly things or we just do things where um, a great example is how often have you been in a friend circle and these guys are kind of talking and there's kind of like a bigger conversation too. Like you're all just kind of jabbering and it's fun. And then somebody next to you says something to somebody else and it like they didn't hear it, right? How often does that happen? Like. It's embarrassing. It really is when you're like, hey, so-and-so, how are you? And then they're, they didn't hear you and they keep talking or, you know, that's when you can respond with humor and be like, well, you didn't ask me, but I'm doing really good, right? Because you are focused on extending that person a little bit of grace through your humor and you just save them from an embarrassing situation. This alone, if you just started to work on this trait first, if, if you're like, hey, I wanna be more charming and I'm gonna work on this tip, this is it. To see everything with humor and just start to use those little phrases of just like, oh, I thought that was so funny or you know what, you always say the cutest things or oh, they didn't hear you, but I did and I had a great weekend and how are you, you know? it really will just start to like take your charm from like, hey, you're being a nice like regular person to like, wha-bam, everybody knows that you are an incredibly charming and delightful person and they won't even know why. They'll just be like, I love hanging out with this person. And it's because you see everything with humor. Little side note for you. I wouldn't say that I'm like a class, well, 100% I'm not a class clown. Like I'm not like a jokesy person but I still see myself as somebody that's very funny. And so you don't have to be somebody that's a class clown or always telling jokes. Humor comes from everyday living. Humor comes from just like looking at happens, happenstances in life and like looking at the funny side of them. So don't feel like you have to learn jokes. Like if anything, I would pick an idol or two who like genuinely in their whole 
person is super funny and they they aren't telling jokes. They're just more like looking at life and pointing out the humor that already is existing. Okay, for all of my cute baby girls watching, I really want you to like hear me on this tip. And my second tip is don't be shy. This is coming from a shy girl. I'm shy and I like truly believe that the, the natural, um, what is the word I meant? Like the natural state, for lack of a better word, of human beings is to be shy, is to not say anything and kind of sit back and kind of watch instead of just throwing yourself out there. Um, and so I want to encourage you to not be shy. And does this mean that you automatically have to turn into somebody that raises their hand in class and is always talking and just like has no sense of like, being shy or that no sense of kind of self-awareness that pulls us back a little bit. No, because that's unrealistic to think that that's a switch that we can turn on and off. But our courage, our confidence in ourself is a muscle and so is shyness. And when we practice and exercise our shyness of, oh, I'm not going to say hi first. I'll let them say hi first. Or oh, they, they brought a new person into our group and I, I don't know who they are. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just wait for them to introduce themselves. Like that's exercising your shyness and allowing your shyness to get stronger. Instead, I just want you to start exercising your confidence and your courage, quite frankly, to put yourself out there because think about the most charming person that you know, they're not shy. Are they loud or brash or abrasive? absolutely not and that's not what you have to be but they aren't afraid to go introduce themselves to people they don't wait for people to reach out to them they reach out to people first when they see somebody new or somebody um i mean this happens all the time at high school you've got your little group that you're chatting with after school and you can kind of see somebody hovering or somebody that's like hi you know instead of just being like oh okay yeah blah blah, blah i'm talking to this person you say, oh my goodness, hey, so-and-so, come over here. This person was telling me all about their crazy weekend or what happened in math class or how are you, right? We're not gonna wait for other people to invite us to be kind. That's what not being shy is all about, is that we're not gonna wait for people to come up to us to be our friend. Let me tell you this story that I've shared this before um, in some of my other videos, but I think it's really interesting that Truly this principle helped score me a husband because when I was dating my husband, I was really exercising this muscle of confidence and trying to be my best self. And I remember the first time I met his parents and we walked in the door and they were, they were there and then a group of their friends was there. So there's like four people that I don't know. And two of these people are like super important to me because they're my boyfriends or my dates parents at that time. And so instead of like kind of hanging by the door and waiting for them to, to notice me that I'm there and that they should come say hi to me, he said, and still being cute, still being nice, right? But still being quite shy and quite in myself. I went over there and I said, hey, are you Doug and Nancy? Hi, I'm Abby. And they said, hey, I'm Abby to the other girls, or not the other girls, the other couple that I had never met before in my life. And I didn't think anything of that experience, right? A couple months later, when we're engaged, we're married, my father-in-law brings that up to me all the time. He's like, do you want to know the moment I knew you were a keeper? And I'm like, yeah, I want, <laughs> I want to know that moment. And he's like, it's when you walked in the door and you came up and you shook our hands and then you introduced yourself to our friends. I knew you were a keeper then. And that's really stuck with me. And so that moment helps me remember to be courageous and to not be shy. Okay, I was coaching a personal one-on-one -on -one client and they asked me, they said, Abby, how do, how do I make friends? And this is a woman that I think is so amazing. She's a grown, um, grown woman. We're all grown women at a certain point. Like, she's in her 30s. She's got all the cutest babies in the whole world. And she's asking me like, how do I make friends? And I said, just assume you're already friends. This tip changed her life. This tip changes so many teens life because I don't know why, 
natural state of human beings, we just assume that when we don't know somebody that they don't like us. Isn't that the case, right? When actually we have a million interactions every single day that tell us just the opposite. When the lady ringing up your groceries asks you how your day is, she already assumes that you're a good person, right? When, you know, you bump into a, a stranger walking down the aisle and you're just like, oh, pardon me, right? We interact with these people and just assume they're already really great people. But yet when we go to school, when we go to social gatherings, we just assume that if somebody's not talking to us or if somebody um, hasn't yet introduced us or we don't know them or maybe they're in a group that we aren't in a part of, that they automatically don't like us and we have to win them over. I'm telling you to flip that idea on its head because most of us, most human beings, yes, there's a couple sour pickles in the batch, but that's okay because most human beings don't need to be won over. Most human beings want to have friends. Most human beings are dying to talk to you. And if you follow the tips that I share in like my charisma videos and how to get people to like you, like you already know all the things of being a good friend. So just assume you're already friends. Everybody that you haven't met is just a friend that you're waiting to make. So don't assume that you have to win people over. Just assume that you're already friends. And truly just switching your brain over to this mode of thinking of we're already friends will change every single interaction that you have with a person. So I know this one can sound really simple. I know this one can sound like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll, okay, people are nice. Do it. Truly start to believe this. And if you have to write a sticky note and put it on your mirror, write a sticky note, put it on your mirror, and just assume that people are already your friend. You want to be charming at school? Be people focused. What do I mean by this? So, especially in high school, we have the tendency to be really self and inward focused. Is this wrong? Is this bad? No, it keeps us alive. I think of that cute movie Inside Out by Disney with the little green girl. Um, it keeps us from social disasters. It keeps us from disgusting things, right? Like if we're listening to that little green emotion in our mind, we're very self-focused. But every single person that you interact with is self-focused too. They're thinking, oh my gosh, my hair looks like a lion's mane today. I don't know about that. Oh, this sweater, it's a little bit too hot. I wonder if people are going to notice that I'm like kind of sweating or... I don't know, it's got this little rip here. Do you think people are gonna think that I'm like poor? I don't Like we just go through all the things and we're so worried about ourselves. But if you truly want to be a charming person, you've got to start to be people focused. And let me give you a couple examples of what this looks like in real life. I'm not high school, like I'm at college. Like how, how am I people focused? People focused is when you have a group of friends and notice that somebody's kind of maybe on the outside of the circle or some one of your friends isn't in the circle just yet. You like open up and give them space to be there and invite them to come over. Because in that moment, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. Like, how do I break into this little circle? Do they want me there? I don't know, did I say? Like, they're just, right? And you're probably thinking, well, I wanna to talk to so-and-so. But if you're people focused, you stop and you say, hey, get over here, Shayla, get over here, Jane. You know, how are you? Like you realize that there's a need, you saw that need and you address that need, right? Same example of being people focused of you know that your best friend has a mega crush on this cute boy math class and you're like, see him walking by and she's with you and you go, hey, Chris, hey, say Bob. Like, how are you? I like talking about math, right? And then you're like, hey, have you ever met my amazing best friend, Shayla? I guess that's the name of the day. <laughs> Shayla? Like, um, I don't know if you guys have ever met. Chris just moved here from so-and-so or Chris and I have math together, you know? And then he goes on his way. That was a little bit of service to your best friend or to your friend um, because you were thinking about them and saying, hey, if that was me and I had a crush, on this guy, 
I'd want my friend to kind of introduce me so he starts to know who I am and then I can do my own magic. I don't, we don't need to like overcomplicate that, but you're just being people focused. You're just noticing people. This is as simple as when you sit down in math class, you notice your peers sitting around you and you're like, hey, how are you? Or, hey, I noticed you dropped a pencil. Here you go. Like, we're not being shy and we're also being quite aware of the people around us because charming people are not focused inward. They're focused outward. And here's the magic of it. You might think, well, wow, that takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. Yeah, it really does. Because the least amount of effort is just to worry about us. Our brain already wants to do that. But I promise as you do this, it's going to get easier. And this is really going to make the difference in your level of charm. Because people are going to start to see you not only as a friend, but as an advocate. And when you think about somebody that's charming, they're like an advocate. Like you, you trust them. You have like genuine warm feelings towards them. And so if you can be as charming as you want to be and follow all these other tips, but if you you know, snuff somebody out of the group or, oh, hi, you know, I really don't want to talk to you today. Your charm and your credibility just like plummeted. So that's why it's so important to be people focused. Well, babe, there you have it. That is how to be the most charming girl at school and how you can increase your charm with people. And these four tips are a little bit heavy, I would say, in the sense that not the material or not what we talk about, but that they're not just something that you can say, okay, well, now I'm gonna go be perfect at that today. This takes practice. I can't tell you how many times I have done the wrong thing and realized like, oh, dang it, I should have responded with humor. Oh, dang it, I got shy and I stopped myself from going over there and saying hi and now that, that opportunity kind of passed. It's okay. You are learning, you are developing these charming muscles, right? That's how you gotta view these skills. Courage, a muscle. Confidence, a muscle. Charisma, a muscle. Being charming, a mental muscle, right? So work on these, go test them out tomorrow at school. Go test them out with your family. Go test them out with your church group. Like just start to practice and you're gonna find things that work for you. Maybe some sayings that I've thrown out here don't work for you because that's not what you would say or do, that's okay. Tweak it, twist it, make it fit your situation. And I promise you, you're going to start to be one of the most charming people that people know. So best of luck, babe. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to love this video, which is how to be confident at school. I also have a video on how to be popular at school that talks a lot about um, the basics of like people skills. So I would check that one out too, because I'd say you want some of those basics down and then we layer on the charm, right? This is a little bit of like a mid, mid-level coaching, I would say. So be sure you've got those basics of personal, like one-on-one -on -one people skills down. And then let's layer on this layer of charming. You're going to be kind of unstoppable, babe. So wishing you the best of luck. I hope you subscribe if you like this video and like videos on personal development for young women. And I cannot wait to see you in my next video. So, Abby J out. <laughs>